83-74. Pistons win the series four games to three. Good day for American tennis players at the rain shortened French Open. 14-year-old Jennifer Capriati advanced to the women's quarterfinals. She's the youngest ever to do that on the ladies' side. Andre Agassi in the far court defeated fellow American Jim Courier in four sets. Courier had won the first two before Agassi got on track. This was a revenge win for Agassi, who lost to Courier at the French Open last year. Michael Chang also won today. In golf, Dr. Gil Morgan wins the Kemper Open. Watch him hit the birdie putt at number 10, and it's a long one. His first win at the PGA event in seven years, finishing at 10 under par. Major League Baseball amateur draft is tomorrow, and go for All-American catcher Dan Wilson, expected to be picked early in round one, and we'll hear from him tomorrow at 5. Maybe the Twins will get him with the 12th pick. Scores from baseball today, 8-2 Boston, Toronto over uh, Milwaukee, 7 and four. Baltimore a winner. Frank Tanana the shutout for Detroit. California wins tonight 7-4. To That's now a final. Philadelphia wins 8-3. St. Louis over the Cubs. The Cubs dead last in the National League East. San Francisco over Houston. Atlanta wins in 10. Montreal over Pittsburgh. Tom Browning the shutout 2 nothing over the Dodgers. I'm out of time. Not too often to see Herbie getting the bye-bye. Nah, but Herbie had a few choice words. At least he got a say in anyway. Yeah, I could look for <laughs> Yes, he did. Interesting. Thanks, Ren. Coming up next, what did Gorbachev miss during his trip to the Twin Cities? Some of the fun was taking place just a few blocks away. Here's this week's Care 11 News Express Run, St. Paul Route 35C from White Bear Lake to downtown St. Paul. It leaves Stillwater and Division at 6.44 a.m., Maplewood Mall at 7.13, it arrives at 5th Street and Robert at 7.38. Join Care 11 in the MTC for a free ride on the Care 11 News Express. Announcing a world-class value in four-door sedans at a special price, the Hyundai XL. More horsepower. Power. power. Multi Fuel injection. More power. Automatic. Automatic. Automatic four-speed. Sure. Stereo, too. Stereo. Stereo. Stereo cassette. Stereo. Really? Uh. Wiper. Intermittent. Wiper. Wiper. Rear fogger. More room. More headroom. More leg room. Pocket seats. Five passenger living room. Tinted glass. Dual remote mirror. Mirrors. Ice wheels. The XL four-door sedan from Hyundai. Now specially priced at just $74.94. Test drive a world-class value at your nearest Hyundai dealer. Do it today. They washed out all the blue from my blue jeans. When your memory and your picture don't agree, bring your picture to Pro-X. We'll fix it free. Herbie's asks, what's the perfect double-decker? Start with a lightly toasted bun and plenty of lean roast beef. Perfect. Thin bun, more roast beef, tomato, good, lettuce. Now that's a sandwich. No, 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 back up a minute. Bun's good, roast beef's good, not cheese. Swiss, more roast beef, more Swiss. Beautiful. Hey, hey, not so fast. Where's the lettuce? Now roast beef, some bacon, some cheddar, tomato. Perfect. I couldn't have made it better myself. I, I really like the Arby's new double-deckers. They're perfect for everyone. Before we go tonight, the Gorbachev visit wasn't the only big event in the Twin Cities today. The grand old days were going on just a few blocks away from the governor's mansion. Carolyn Marinin was there and tells us what the Gorbachevs missed. Don't let it rain on this parade. A little drizzle, a little cold, didn't seem to bother anyone celebrating grand old days. A little chilly today, but we're still having a good time. The band played on... The music blared. All the way and back to the governor's mansion, site of President Gorbachev's first stop in the Twin Cities. And with all due respect, Mr. Gorbachev, you're missing one great parade here on Grand Avenue and some pretty darn good food. Mm, good. <laughs> okay, so Gorby gets to sit down to a four-course dinner and some pretty nice china. But there are a few folks here who think Mikhail and Raisa would get a little more flavor on Grand Avenue. Tell them to come on over and we'll give them a few corn dogs. It's culture. It's Minnesota culture and its finest. He should eat a carrot, a Minnesota grown carrot. Even if Gorby didn't make it to the next block, he was here in spirit. I've been selling downtown St. Paul. They've been pretty good. John, let's take another picture. But when you have the found a musical tribute to the Soviet leader, the Gorby Rat. <laughs> Carolyn Marin and Care 11 News, St. Paul. All in all, a very interesting day. Thank you for being a part of it. He was everywhere. Uh, we all want to remind you that at 1035, there's going to be a special show on the Gorbachev visit, so you may want to roll your VCRs to catch all the memories. If you don't have a VCR, Paul and I will come to your home and recap the whole thing. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.
things, as well as the people in Pueblo, have anything to do with writing to Pueblo, Colorado for a free consumer information catalog? Nah. I'm Philip Brunel. Join me for the Midsummer Music Festival with great artists in classical, jazz, pop, and reggae music. The incomparable Ella Fitzgerald. UB40 and the pop sounds of the Temptations and the Jets. West Germany's Baden-Baden Symphony and our own Minnesota Orchestra. Germany's magnetic cabaret singer Uta Lempers. June 15 through 24 in the Highland Lake Park Reserve in Bloomington. Be there. To order, call Ticketmaster, 989-5151. Making a simple phone call isn't always simple for the deaf and hearing impaired, but new technology and the DEAF relay service are making it easier. Hi, I have a call for you from a hearing impaired caller. Hi, Renee. It's great to talk to you. A lot of good things are bringing the deaf and hearing communities closer together. Things like closed captioning on CARE 11 News. New Scribe 11 for the deaf and hearing impaired communities is funded in part by NSP. People in Pueblo, Colorado can't say why they do things better than most. Of course, it's got nothing to do with Pueblo being the home of the Consumer Information Catalog. No, it's got nothing to do with that catalog's list of almost 200 government booklets on topics like education, health, and federal benefits. So could doing things this well have anything to do with the free catalog and sample booklet you get by sending to Catalog Pueblo, Colorado, 81009? This is a Camry 11 News Special. The Gorbachev visit to Minnesota with Paul Majors and Diana Pierce. Thank you all for your feelings. For having come here. We don't the Soviet people have just as much respect for American citizens as you do. Я желаю гражданам Миннесоты, жителям этого прекрасного края счастья и благополучия. I wish happiness and well-being to the people of Minnesota and to this state. До свидания. Bye. All of Minnesota is applauding tonight following the visit that changed history in the heartland. Good evening, I'm Paul Major. And I'm Diana Pierce. Soviet President Mikhail Gorbachev and his wife Raisa blew into Minnesota on a whirlwind visit that had the world's attention on our state for more than seven hours. It all began with the moment Minnesotans had been waiting for, seeing President Gorbachev step from his jet and ride into Minnesota history. <laughs> 1 40 p.m. Sunday. Only 10 minutes late and looking a bit tired, President Gorbachev and wife Reza arrive at Twin Cities International to one of the coldest June days in Minnesota history. But it was anything but a cold reception that the Gorbachevs received from a long line of local dignitaries and a small crowd just feet away. Before leaving the airport, the Soviet leader set the tone for the day, giving up close personal greetings to the people of Minnesota in a way that's uniquely his own. 2 p.m. A seemingly endless motorcade departs Twin Cities International. On to the first stop, lunch at the governor's mansion with a handful of state and Soviet officials. Lunch was a private affair, no cameras allowed. But an announcement to follow was evidence that lunch was a success. Governor Perpich Today, and publisher Robert Maxwell outlined the formation of a $100 million private research institute, a think tank of sorts, joining scientists from the United States, Europe, and the Soviet Union. President Gorbachev responds gratefully. 4.30 in the afternoon, President Gorbachev and Reza leave the governor's mansion to a front yard of well-wishers. He mingles, accepts applause, and once again greets the crowd before heading to downtown Minneapolis in the Radisson Hotel for a meeting with 145 of the nation's top business and agriculture leaders. The meeting centers on the Soviet Union's troubled economy, with Gorbachev at times sounding more like a salesman, pitching more joint ventures to move radical economic reforms along. 6 p.m., South Minneapolis. 
A crowd of 7,500 gathers outside the home of Steve and Karen Watson, chosen to play host to Ray's a Gorbachev. An opportunity for Ray's to see how the typical American family lives. The Watsons and their four children enjoy a brief visit and talk about American life over coffee and chocolate chip cookies. At 7.30, President Gorbachev makes a final stop, and an important one. A swing through computer giant control data in Bloomington where he gets a first-hand look at computers his country ordered to improve the safety of nuclear power plants. Then it's on to the airport. 8.22 p.m. The Twin Cities waves a fond farewell to the Gorbachevs. And they wave a fond farewell back. At this hour, the Gorbachevs are en route to San Francisco, where more of the same is expected for tomorrow night. Gorbachev's visit to the heartland was meant to go far beyond the political realm and touch the lives of everyday Minnesotans, including that of the Brand family. Their farm in Farmington was part of Gorbachev's itinerary, but that visit was canceled. Instead, the family was invited to see Gorbachev off at the airport, and we'll hear about their day in a few minutes. We'll also meet the Watson family and find out what it was like for them to be in the international limelight for a day. A lot of Minnesotans who weren't scheduled to meet President Gorbachev today got to anyway because of his flair for the unexpected. When he arrived at the airport, instead of getting into his limo, he and Raisa went straight for the small crowd gathered there to shake hands. It was a repeat performance just blocks from the governor's mansion. He got out of the motorcade and greeted protesters demanding independence for the Soviet Baltic nations. He then walked the remaining two blocks to the mansion gates. Then after lunch with the governor, Gorbachev walked among the protesters and gawkers once again before getting into his car. But his surprises didn't end there. He caused quite a commotion on Summit Avenue when he got out of his car the fourth time to walk the crowd before heading to the Minneapolis Radisson. And he went into the crowd again just before he entered the offices of Control Data. And Gorbachev's surprise stop put Secret Service officers into a frenzy, making their jobs nearly impossible. During the seven-hour visit, security was the tightest this area has ever seen. Freeways were blocked to make way for the Gorbachev motorcade. Spectators were kept off overpasses and instead viewed the motorcade from atop sound barrier walls. But in the end, authorities were delighted with how it went. Uh, it's been a monumental task and a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears has gone into it, but <clears throat> I think it's all paid off. <clears throat> And all that planning for extra security did pay off. There were plenty of Gorby gawkers crowding around his planned stops to get a good look at the Soviet leader. And that was especially the case at the governor's mansion where the crowd swelled to the thousands. And as Carolyn Marinin reports, there were thousands of individual stories of how spectators got a glimpse of Gorby. Maybe a glimpse. For just a glimpse, some Gorby watchers staked out their spot awfully early on Summit Avenue. Well, since it was raining, we brought out, it didn't have any other plastic, <laughs> so we brought the twister out so we could sit on that. Some got here by 9 o'clock this morning, but barricades and cops, lots of them, kept the curious at a distance. But two hours later, all the premium spots were taken here along Summit Avenue as Gorby watchers anxiously awaited for the Soviet to arrive. We have his whole schedule, so if we don't see him here, we're going to go a lot of other places to try to see him. I wrote it all down where I, where I heard he was going to be. And the serious watchers were prepared. Yes. Keeping track of their every move with the help of TV and radio. They're just leaving the airport. In transit, but I don't know where he is. On the way here. The crowd went wild. <laughs> Gorbachev got cheers and waves like a rock star. People dashed off in hopes of touching him during his unannounced stop. And for many here, just a glimpse of the world leader was enough. He was standing right in front of us, and he, he just waved and riot. It was beautiful, and there, it was great. <laughs> he was great. Bye. All right, Gorby. Carol and Marion, Carol 11 News. St. Paul. And in the frenzy, a few snow fences and a few flower beds are trampled, but no one was hurt and officials had no real problems. Coming up, along with the pleasure of meeting Minnesotans, came some business. Mikhail Gorbachev meeting with some of America's most prominent capitalists. And how a farm family played an unexpected part in Gorbachev's send-off.
brought to you in part by FINA, the formula for the future. Coverage of President Gorbachev's visit to Minnesota is brought to you in part by Target, right on the money. Brought to you in part by AT&T, the right choice. You want brand name quality at the hottest price. Well, Target will do you right every time with the best prices on the best stuff. If you want top quality at the hottest price, you got it. And if you're thinking of Target, you can't go wrong. You're right. When? Friday? You're kidding. We're getting company from Russia. How to get it done. Russian flags. $1,500. We'll make it $2,500. Many insurance plans dictate which doctors you see, but it's not the insurance company who takes out your gallbladder. At Park Nicollet, we accept over 100 kinds of insurance, from Blue Cross Blue Shield to Travelers. More importantly, we're among the nation's leaders in many areas of medicine. Still, we're not Minnesota's most famous clinic yet. But then the Mayo Brothers had a 62-year head start. About five days previous to the health fair, uh, I had had a cramp in my leg, and then when I would try to walk on it, it would go numb. You put a uh, blood pressure cuff on both my ankles. There was no blood flowing down through the leg. I would have lost it. I just went back and played tennis for the first time, and uh, it, you know, it just feels great. So I just want to thank Channel 11 and, and all the people that were there for being there. President Gorbachev, the whole point of this trip was to meet with more than 140 of America's top business executives in downtown Minneapolis. Gorbachev explained that while his agricultural and economic reforms have been slow in coming, that they are in fact coming. He asked those present to work with him to bring change in the Soviet Union. Those who are with us at this time have a good chance, good prospects of cooperation in our great country, in our great market, because of its tremendous potential. But those who just stand on the sidelines, who do not want to risk, well, they will remain, I think, observers for years to come. We'll make sure that that is so. Gorbachev says the trade agreement signed with Bush during the Washington summit will help with American business ventures. He said that is an agreement his country has waited decades for. Gorbachev then made his way to Control Data in Bloomington, where he was shown the latest in Minnesota-grown high-tech computer systems. The Soviet Union is in dire need of computer technology. In a speech to the crowd, Gorbachev talked about the Chernobyl nuclear disaster and how this new technology could stop future accidents from happening in his country. Part of the official itinerary also included a farm visit designed to show Gorbachev how a modern American dairy farm operates. But about two hours into the trip, the Soviets announced they were canceling the Gorbachev's visit to Richard and Cecilia Brand's farm in Farmington. But all was not lost for the Brands. They were invited to meet Gorbachev tonight as he prepared to depart for California. They're seen here with their backs to the camera saying goodbye to Gorbachev. Carol Evans' Melissa Young has more on what'll be a bittersweet memory for the Brands. The farm is out. Okay. Why? I'm not sure. It wasn't our decision. It wasn't our decision. That news sent 100 reporters and photographers scrambling. But the news was an even bigger shock on the Brand Farm. The Brand family and their friends had worked hard to get ready for this visit, cleaning up the barn, even putting in fresh flowers in the window boxes. Now Gorbachev will never see those efforts. The family first heard of the change on television. We naturally were very disappointed, but we realized... Um, that uh, this is beyond our uh, our control. So. It was a lot of excitement for the last couple of days, and uh, a lot of farms never got that, and we did. And uh, maybe it isn't uh, it's a big disappointment, but at least we had something. And 
With or without a visit from the Soviet leader, the farm work still had to be done. Neighbors had already planned to do this night's milking. That gave the family time to head for the airport to at least meet the Soviet first family and give them gifts. Are you guys still going to be able to give them some flowers? <laughs> still, Richard Brand says it's not the same. I'm disappointed because I think we, would, we had a lot to show. Uh, what an American family farm, typical American fa family farm in, uh, in, uh, in America can do for agriculture. Brand can tell him that, but it's not as good as seeing it firsthand. Melissa Young, CARE 11 News, Farmington. The unofficial reason for the cancellation is that Gorbachev was too tired, but Agriculture Commissioner Jim Nichols calls the change suspicious. He believes Senator Rudy Boschwitz may have urged Gorbachev to skip the farm for political reasons, saying it could have been a boost to DFL politicians. The Gorbachevs today wanted to get a flavor for what it's like to live in Minnesota, and that curiosity put a South Minneapolis family into the international spotlight. We'll tell you about Reza Gorbachev's visit to the Watson home and some of her unexpected stops on the way. Athena, the drive to the 21st century has begun, and here's where it's led. To a formula for gasoline so advanced it reduces emissions as you drive, and increases gasoline mileage with just a few tankfuls. We call these gasolines Genesis, because in so many ways they're a whole new beginning. Genesis gasoline. From your friends at Athena, the formula for the future. Friday? You're kidding. We're getting company from Russia. Where do we some Russian flags? 1,500. We'll make it 2,500. <laughs> time on Cheers. Wow, Kelly, that's beautiful. Come on, Uncle Val, I know you. What's the gag? Look inside. Woody loves the girl who has everything. Uh, uh, make that almost everything. I'm giving her the really big book of Dutch humor. Dutch humor, huh? Yeah, well, we'll try this punchline. And to think that for your birthday, I was going to get you a Porsche. So, will Woody get the joke or the Porsche? Next time on Cheers. <laughs> Arby's asks, what's the perfect double-decker? Start with a lightly toasted bun and plenty of lean roast beef. Perfect. Thin bun, more roast beef, tomato, good, lettuce. Now that's a sandwich. No, 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 back up a minute. Bun's good, roast beef's good, now cheese. Swiss, more roast beef, more Swiss. Beautiful. Hey, hey, not so fast. Where's the lettuce? Now roast beef, some bacon, some cheddar, tomato. Perfect. I couldn't have made it better myself. I, I kind of really like the Arby's new double-deckers. They're perfect for everyone. The flashbulbs flickered just about any time Mikhail Gorbachev took center stage today as thousands of photographers and reporters followed his every footstep. For eight hours today, Minnesota was the center of world attention. During that time, the Metrodome became the center of the world for the journalists sent here to cover the Gorbachev visit. Carol Evans, Eric Olson reports on the media circus direct from center ring. Gorbachev hit the ground running here in Minneapolis, responding to applause from 200 well-wishers at an Air Force base outside the city. Ross Simpson of NBC Radio right News now, never Robert left the Trump Metrodome today and nearly never left his seat, but he was able to tell hundreds of thousands of his listeners across the country what was happening during every step of the Gorbachev visit. Thanks to the high-tech setup here, Ross and the thousands of other reporters got the big picture, with pictures and sound coming from every location and beamed back to the dome for reporters to see and report on. <laughs> Whatever the language and whatever form of communication, print, TV, or radio, the goal here has been to get the information in and move it on out as quickly as possible. It also means getting the pool reporter crews organized, credentialized. He needs an orange one, too. And on board buses bound for each site the Gorbachevs plan to visit. With little more than two weeks to prepare, organizers couldn't believe their luck. The whole thing came off without a glitch. 
to set one of these things up in the short time we did, it just doesn't happen. And in Minneapolis, it did. <laughs> so, I'm happy. And making reporters happy hardly ever happens. And that's what makes the Metrodome Media Circus a story in and of itself. Eric Olson, Carol 11 News, Minneapolis. Much of the equipment used at the Metrodome today was donated or rented, and hundreds of volunteers from local businesses donated their time to make the media center a success. While cameras were on her husband, Reza Gorbachev made an unscheduled stop as she was headed to visit a South Minneapolis family. It was much to the surprise of two store clerks. They ended up waiting on the First Lady of the Soviet Union. She came in, she asked about the food, what kind of food we have, how many people come through in a day. And then she asked for a cup of coffee, and we didn't have any made, so I had to brew a pot really fast for her. She stayed for about seven minutes and bought some uh, macadamia nuts, and she bought some of these here. Oh, we're in the middle of bubblegum dispensers. We bought the last ones out. Can I have the receipt just to prove we got it? That one for $24. Brittany, I gave you one. Oh, Mrs. Gorbachev shopped at the Snyder's Drug Store, picking up a few items for the Watson family, which she was on the way to visit. A cashier rang up her purchases, but an aide had to pick up the tab. Reza was then mobbed outside the store as a crowd quickly formed. Through it all, she kept a smile on her face, seeming to take in every moment. That quick surprise stop just prolonged the excitement over at the Watson home in South Minneapolis. The Watsons were chosen to host Mrs. Gorbachev because Lisa Watson traveled to the Soviet Union with the Children's Theater. They were also considered a typical American family. Carol Evans' Asha Blake has the story of their anything but typical visit. They screamed, waved hankies and signs. Mrs. Gorbachev could not have had a warmer or more spirited welcome from people in the Watsons' neighborhood. And she returned the warmth by unexpectedly walking over to speak with hundreds of school children and neighbors before finally meeting Lisa Watson and the rest of the Watson family. While munching on chocolate chip cookies inside, she asked the Watsons, well, typical questions about their house payments, about vacation, grandparents, and their diets. Presents also changed hands. The Watsons gave Mrs. Gorbachev three books, a photo album of the family, some artwork done by Steve Watson, and some t-shirts. She gave them an ornate picture. The visit lasted a little over half an hour, and in that time, Mrs. Gorbachev got a chance to know the Watsons. But the Watsons also had a chance to really get to know the kind of person Mrs. Gorbachev is. She wasn't anything like a uh, cold figurehead or anything that you might expect a person in her position that could be. She was exactly the opposite. I think she is a wonderful woman. She's really nice. She did reach out her hand, and it's almost like that was the third language that was going to get everything started for me. As she was leaving, Raisa Gorbachev surprisingly came over to say a few words to the press. She talked about love, the love she felt for the Watson family, and the peace she wanted for both the United States and the Soviet Union. In the end, this might not just be a once-in-a-lifetime meeting for the Watsons and Mrs. Gorbachev. Why? She gave me her address so I can write to her. <laughs> Asha Blake, Carol 11 News in Minneapolis. And tomorrow the Watsons will try once again to live normal lives. The four kids are going back to school. And Mr. Watson says it's back to the drawing board in the elementary art class that he teaches. When we come back, we'll wrap up today's historic Gorbachev visit. And if you don't have your VCRs rolling, you might want to do that during the break for a special photo essay. The Care 11 Bike Classic is just a really good way to meet a lot of really fun people. Everybody can do it. It's not a race, and it's just a ride, and you can take your time. You get in shape, you have a great cause, and you have a lot of fun doing it. Ride in the all-new Care 11 Bike Classic to St. Cloud and back. Support the family of Health One Hospitals and have a great time, too. Pick up your Care 11 Bike Classic brochure at any Tom Thumb store. Do it right now. Special thanks to Northwest Airlines and Target Stores for their generous support. You can help support this historic event by purchasing an official welcoming kerchief or this full-color poster rendition of the first American advertisement ever to run in the Soviet newspaper Pravda, welcoming Gorbachev to the state of Minnesota. Pick up your commemorative souvenirs at any of these Olympic Festival kiosk locations and be a part of Minnesota's Soviet history. Proceeds to support Gorbachev's Minnesota visit.
Making a simple phone call isn't always simple for the deaf and hearing impaired, but new technology and the DEAF relay service are making it easier. Hi, I have a call for you from a hearing impaired caller. Hi, Renee. It's great to talk to you. A lot of good things are bringing the deaf and hearing communities closer together. Things like closed captioning on CARE 11 News. News Scribe 11 for the deaf and hearing impaired communities is funded in part by NSP. Before we close out tonight, do you have any thoughts on today? I think the thing that struck me the most when I was standing in front of the Radisson is here we have all these CEOs of some of America's most important companies, or con or the companies from some of the across America. Just let me get this straight. It's been a long day. <laughs> it's been a long day. We've been standing out mm -hmm. there, it seems like, since <laughs> noon. But they were humbly touched by his offer mm -hmm. to come and work with them. And these gentlemen are not easily bowled over. Sure. These people are used to making a hard deal. I think and his honesty and his touched. frankness about mm -hmm. uh, you know the problems in his country. I think what uh, the picture that I will always remember out of the entire day is the picture of Gorbachev on the plane as he's prepared to leave with his little face in the little porthole mm -hmm. window and his and other waving. hand in the next one, waving like this, mm -hmm. and then raise his hands pressed to the next window. Mm -hmm. the, the warmth of the two people was even evident in Very much so. That's we haven't had a chance to see that before. Mm -hmm. That's I the picture that I like. Mm -hmm. That's the picture that I'll always, I think, carry with me. Well, we'd like to leave you tonight with a photo essay by editor Jeff Crocker that captures the flavor of Gorbachev's once-in-a-lifetime visit to Minnesota. Thank you for joining us. Das Vidanya. Good night. <laughs> He needs to bring back something that would demonstrate that his new foreign policy thinking is beginning to pay off in a way an ordinary Russian can benefit from. The question puzzling Americans and Soviets alike is what does Gorbachev stand to gain from his visit to Minneapolis? Minnesota is a good combination of the best parts of the United States and that they were familiar with it. President and Mrs. Gorbachev saying their goodbyes to go off to Minnesota where he'll also be received as the Soviet folk hero and a major celebrity. There's Gorbachev and his and wife, they, Asa. There we mm -hmm. are. He's on the far side of his limousine there, you can see, uh, about to get in, and, uh, well, he's walking around it, maybe. Let's see if he comes to the crowd. He's moving in this direction, <laughs> behind the way. limousine. By the way, here he comes. He's coming over to the crowd now to greet mm -hmm. greet some of these people. Which I was sure he would. Going to make their day. No doubt a pleasant moment expect. for him. Uh, you know, there obviously has to be concern when he walks among the crowds in Moscow. Everyone's got a criticism for him, and yet... Here he is being warmly embraced and greeted by uh, Minnesotans. You can certainly see the joy in his eyes there. Yes, Paul, American and Soviet concerns are totally different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and the fact, you know, too, that uh, he represents a real change in Soviet direction, policy and attitude, something that Americans like, That's right. uh, openness, uh, more democratic. Today's uh, certainly not bogged down with world-shattering decisions that have to be made, and more of a joyous celebration not only for him, but for the entire state of Minnesota, just simply the fact that he's here and and Minnesota truly is in the uh, spotlight. How important is this summit to Gorbachev? I think for him it's particularly important in the sense that he, uh, his strength in the Soviet Union is in foreign policy. Uh, he needs to have, I think, foreign policy successes, mm -hmm. and he also has to come to a place like Minnesota where he's given a very friendly greeting mm -hmm. so he can go back and show people that he knows how to deal with the outside world. I think he is absolutely relishing uh, this moment and these people. Well, I didn't think I would uh, ever have an opportunity to see the Soviet president this uh, up close and personal, and here we are. We know our differences that divide us, but uh, 
let those differences uh, be with those people who have them. But we join our efforts problemы, to address and come to grips with the problems that are concern to all of us. I wish happiness and well-being to the people of Minnesota and to this state. But We have an anchor for our relations. But those who just stand on the sidelines, who do not want to risk, who want to wait and see, who don't want to risk their dollars, well, they will remain, I think, observers for years to come. She was late in getting to the Watsons because she stopped off at the Snyder's drugstore at 46th and Nicollet. I am told that was to buy uh, two Nintendo, uh, or ninja figures, rather, with uh, candy inside, apparently for the kids, unless it's uh, perhaps for Mattel later on the plane on the way to California. And what a wonderful moment for the Watson family of Minneapolis, uh, considered to be a typical American family, but after today, they'll be anything but typical. As uh, Ray Zagorbachev says goodbye, let's go back to CDC. are singing, the people are cheering, waving their Gorbachevs. It's kind of the wonderful conclusion to a magnificent day in Minnesota. It's only been seven hours, but it... It's been action-packed, huh? Yeah, it's just uh, seven hours of magic. And there they go. How to teach about baking a moist, delicious cake and learn about love. Take Duncan High's Devil's Fruit Cake Mix. One teacher and one student. Begin with the batter, the moistest of any leading mix. Explain that the moistest batter bakes up into a cake so moist it springs back. Then review. You can't bake a moister cake than Duncan Hines. End of lesson. How to bake your moist, delicious cake. Duncan Hines. When the stranger brought that bullseye, a showdown was a brew. There was open pit, hunts, and masterpiece, all trying to outdo it. But as the sweet smoke rose from the grill, the stranger showed his best. Knowing once folks tried that big, bold taste, that bullseye to stand the test. And throughout the land, every woman and man marveled at the feat. In showdown after showdown, bullseye can't be beat. The big, bold taste of bullseye can't be beat. Could doing things as well as the people in Pueblo have anything to do with writing to Pueblo, Colorado for a free consumer information catalog? Nah. If you're worried about ovarian cancer, call the Gilda Radner Familial Ovarian Cancer Registry. Please don't be afraid. Just do it. Cheers is filmed before a live studio audience.